In this second stream, compliance management deals with what are our external drivers and how well we understand them. A key aspect of goodness in this stream is to measure non-compliance. Non-compliant teams have to do something about their non-compliance. If you have this huge collection of binders with policies and no real consequences for teams to comply with those policies, then teams are likely to choose simply not to comply with those humongous number of documents. Part of good for this practice is when an application is not compliant with a policy, there are consequences, but not as in punishing people. However, there should be a requirement saying that you should take corrective actions. If they stay non-compliant indefinitely, then de facto you will have wasted a lot of effort. At level one, you should be having a clear idea of what your compliance obligations are and making sure you reconcile those obligations. Ideally, you should be looking your entire coverage and perhaps aiming for the highest compliance requirement. That could not always be feasible depending on your organization size though. Level two is where you turn that set of compliance requirements into a standard set of verifications for all applications. So you know what the compliance obligations entail in terms of application requirements. You also define procedures to verify those requirements. A simple one to think is for instance encryption. When you look across all your compliance requirements coming from standards, frameworks like GDPR, PCI and so on, you notice that one of these standards says you can't for instance use SHA-1. Another one might say it's okay to use triple DES. And finally yet another one mentions AES-256. Distilling those into your organization's requirements, you might decide of forbidding SHA-1 altogether and leveraging only AS-256 encryption and turning that into a mandatory policy. Now you have this standard set of requirements you expect everyone to comply with. Level three in this stream is going back to reporting and understanding as an organization where your compliance gaps are. That involves establishing compliance metrics and reporting them for all applications. Once you know the gaps, you can prioritize the gap remediation efforts. 